Hi and welcome to the Pixaroma channel. I'm kicking off a new video series on Stable Diffusion AI. In this first video, I'll show you how to install it on your Windows PC. Go to this link on GitHub, Automatic 1111, Stable Diffusion Web UI. This is a user interface created for Stable Diffusion by the user Automatic 1111. If you scroll down, you'll find more information about this interface and what it has to offer. Stability AI has created some AI models called Stable Diffusion and made them open source. People have started making different interfaces for it, like this Automatic 1111 interface. There are other interfaces too, like NMKD, Invoke AI, and Comfy UI. But for now, my videos will focus on the Automatic 1111 interface. If you scroll down to the installation and running section, you'll see that it can be installed on various systems, but NVIDIA is recommended. I have an NVIDIA RTX 4090, so I'll be clicking on that option. I'll be using Windows Method 1, which is for Windows 10 and 11 with an NVIDIA GPU. Click on the link where it says here, and a new page will open. From there, you'll find some files, and we need to download the one called sd.webui.zip. Once the zip file is saved to your computer, you can unzip it to see what's inside. You'll find some files that end in .bat, like environment, run, and update. First, we need to double click on update.bat. It should run pretty quickly, and when it's done, you'll see a message that says press any key to continue. Just press enter, and that window will close. Now, double click on run.bat, and it will install everything it needs to run stable diffusion. Depending on your computer and how fast your internet is, this could take a while. So just be patient and let it finish doing its thing. On my computer, it took about 10 minutes, but on another computer with good internet but older hardware, it took around 20 to 25 minutes. Once it's installed, you can add more models, extensions, and really take control of what you're doing. Every week, you'll see that new models and extensions come out for it, making it better and better each day. Compared to where it was last year, the AI has improved a lot and you can do some really amazing things with it. Just remember, it's just a tool. In future videos, I'll try to show you how to use it in your workflow, along with other software like Photoshop, for drawing and digital painting to get the results you want. Here, you can see that it's downloading the Stable Diffusion 1.5 version model. Once that's done, you can start using Stable Diffusion right away. When it's finished, a new browser window will open, showing you the interface. It runs on a local IP address, and you'll see this IP address in the command window that stays open in the background while you're using the interface. Usually, when you see that IP number, you'll know that your interface has started. In the top left corner, where it says Stable Diffusion Checkpoint, click on the down arrow and then select the 1.5 version model. Next, where it says Prompt, you can type in what you want. I'm going to type, Cute Cartoon Cat, Digital Painting. Then click Generate to get your first AI created image. Feel free to try again to see what other images you can get. Below the image, you can find more details about it. In my case, it took just one second to generate the image. Close the interface window and go back to the installation guide on GitHub. There, you'll find a section about extra settings you can change using command line arguments. These are special commands you can add to the .bat file to make things faster or fix problems. For example, if you're getting errors or if the program crashes because your graphics card doesn't have enough memory, you can use commands like medvram and lovram to fix that. Now let's go back to the installation folder to show you where that .bat file is. Look for the web UI folder and scroll down until you find the web UI user .bat file. From now on, this is the file you'll use to start the program. This is also where we can add those special commands. First, close the command window that's currently running. Then right click on the .bat file and choose edit. This will open the file in notepad. In there, you'll find the line where you can add those special commands. I'm going to use the Xformers optimization to make the image generation faster. To do that, I'll copy Xformers and paste it into my web UI user.bat file, right after the equal sign where it says set command line args. Save the file, and then you can close it. Now, double click to run that .bat file again to restart stable diffusion with the new settings. It might take a little while because, with Xformers, the program needs to download some extra stuff like Torch. It's also installing Xformers, so you'll need to wait for that to finish. Once it's done, a new browser window will open, and you should see that generating images is now faster. Let's test it again by using the prompt cute cartoon cat digital painting. In the command window, you can see how things are going or catch any errors. If you do get an error, you can see it in this window. 
To figure out how to fix it, you can search for that error on Google along with the word stable diffusion to see how other people solved it. With Xformers, it took 0.9 seconds instead of 1 second to generate the image. That might not seem like a big deal, but it can save you more time when you're working with larger images. The 1.5 version model is designed for 512 by 512 pixel images, so if you mess with that size too much, you might get weird results, like two heads in one image. That's because the program thinks it's working with two separate 512 by 512 images. Let's try a few more tests with different sizes. The default 1.5 model isn't the best out there. You can find better models on the Civitai website. Click on models, and then on the right, you can sort them by how new they are, like by month or week, if you want the latest ones. For the type of model, we want checkpoint in this case. As for the base model, if your computer doesn't have a lot of video memory, you can go with one of the older 1.5 models. But if your computer can handle it, the SDXL model will give you the best results. You can also sort the models by highest rated or most downloaded to find one that's popular or well liked. Let's click on the Juggernaut XL model. Here you'll find a download button and more details about the model. It's a big file, around 6 GB, so make sure you have enough space. Also, check that the file type is Safe Tensor, because that's safer than CKPT extension. Save the downloaded file in the Web UI folder, then go to the Models folder, and finally to the Stable Diffusion folder. You'll see the default 1.5 model that we tested earlier. Again, make sure the file type is Safe Tensor. After that, just wait for it to download. How long it takes will depend on your internet speed. The SDXL models are trained on 1024 by 1024 pixel images, so they work best at that size. Change your settings from 512px to 1024px. After the Juggernaut XL model is downloaded, go to the top left corner of the screen and hit the refresh button. This will update the list of models. Then pick the new Juggernaut XL model from the list and wait for it to get ready. Using the same prompt, click Generate and wait for the image to be made. Because it's a bigger image, it'll take a bit longer. But check out the difference. The images look way better at 1024px. It took 4.3 seconds to make the image, but the quality is a lot better than before. Below the image, you'll see an icon that looks like a folder. If you click on it, it'll open the folder where all the generated images are saved. In there, you'll find all your images sorted into different folders. The folder we're looking at is for text 2 image generation. If you're using image 2 image, you'll find a separate folder for that. Let's try a different prompt, like creating a portrait of a woman. You can type in what you want the image to include in the prompt box. If there are things you don't want in the image, you can put them in the negative prompt box. This way, the program knows what to include and what to leave out. If you click on high res fix, you'll find some options for using an upscaler model. This lets you make even bigger images. Instead of 1024px, you can get a 2048px image. It will take longer to make, but you get a bigger picture, so it's worth the wait. I'm using a denoise strength of 0.2, but feel free to play around with that setting. There are also other upscaler models you can download to try out. It took me 31.5 seconds to make the image using an RTX 4090, but the picture is big and looks really good. If you're planning to use stable diffusion a lot, making a shortcut can save you some time. Just right-click on the web UI user.bat file and choose Create Shortcut. You can rename the shortcut to something like Stable Diffusion or Automatic 1111. Want to give your shortcut a cool look? Right-click on it, go to Properties, and then click the Change Icon button. Pick an icon you like. I'm using a colorful butterfly for mine. Hit Apply, and you can drag that shortcut to your desktop or wherever you want for quick access. Next time, all you need to do is double-click the shortcut to start Stable Diffusion. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Let me know what you'd like to see in future tutorials by leaving a comment or joining my Facebook community called Pixaroma Community. Thanks for watching.